years, she waged unrelenting battle on behalf of the weakest in our society. Once, she was called the most dangerous woman in America, but others called her the miner's angel for her struggles for those who scratched for coal deep in the earth. She was Mother Jones, five feet of roaring rhetoric, silver-haired and bespectacled, clothed in black with hat to match. Around the turn of the century, she became famous for her determined efforts for the most helpless in the workforce, those who labored in the coal mines, textile mills, and garment factories, who were at the mercy of an uncontrolled industrial system that fed on an unending supply of cheap labor. Her unbridled rage at the injustices inflicted on these people and their families became a clarion call for action to alleviate their suffering. It brought the first glimmerings of hope to them and to their wounded and bleeding children slaving away in the mines and mills. The searing invective tumbling forth from this tiny woman struck terror in the hearts of the exploiters. And while she had the look of an angel, she had the tongue of a mule skinner. She was a leader of strikers battling for survival, an organizer of workers needing leadership, a protector of children imprisoned in a heartless factory system. She was a champion of the voiceless, condemning the injustices inflicted on them by an often crass and indifferent society. Irish-born Mary Harris Jones was a magnificent scold. She was the monumental conscience of a country absorbed in accumulating wealth at the expense of a ceaseless flow of immigrant workers who sought a better life in the new world. She was a figure wrapped in tragedy. Her union husband and four children perished in an 1867 epidemic of yellow fever. Later, her modest dressmaking business was wiped out in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. But rather than weep for her loss, she began helping those less fortunate, preaching her belief that their best route to a better life would come by joining together for mutual strength and support. She became obsessed with the need to improve the lot of the most helpless of the nation's burgeoning factory system. The end of the 19th century found her moving from mining camp to mining camp, urging those beset by starvation wages and deplorable conditions to join together for mutual help in the newly formed United Mine Workers Union. She became a welcome figure wherever workers struggled for survival, urging organization, cursing the oppressors, rallying the women and children along with the workers in their own defense. She was a valiant woman doing a man's job in a man's world. She adopted workers as her children, and they, in return, called her mother. Her name was forever linked with the coal miners' massive battles in such as Ludlow and Cripple Creek in Colorado, and Fairmont, New River, and Paint and Cabin Creeks in bloody West Virginia. Her crusades against child labor became legend. She met with the nation's presidents from McKinley to Coolidge on behalf of her people. And as late as her 80s, she was still marching and organizing, enduring unbelievable hardships, assassination threats, and jailing. She was uncompromising in her struggles against the power structure. She even fought union attempts at accommodation with the corporate enemies and broke with such miners' leaders as John Mitchell and John L. Lewis. She was, in short, a revolutionary. Introduced once as a humanitarian, she snapped, Get it right! I'm not a humanitarian! I'm a hell risk! Shortly before she died in 1930, she firmly spelled out her philosophy for the newsreel camera. You know, I am considered a Bolshevik, and a Red, and a W, and a Radical, and I admit being all the I admit being all they charge me with. I'm anything that will change this money civilization to a higher and grander civilization for the ages to come. And I long to see the day when labor will have the destinies of the nation in her own hands and that she will stand a united force and show the world 
what the workers can do. When she died at nearly 100, Mother Jones chose to be laid to rest among her beloved coal miners in the Union Miners Cemetery in Mount Olive, Illinois, faithful to the end.